You mentioned Bivol. Uh, you mentioned better be of. I want to talk a little bit more about Bivol. We just saw what happened uh, less than a week ago on Saturday in Las Vegas at T-Mobile Arena. Canelo losing mm -hmm. to Bivol. You faced Bivol in 2018, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. You faced him in a competitive fight. How did you see Dimitri Bivol in this fight versus Canelo? Since the last time you faced him in 2018, did you see that his skills progressed? Or what that's did you see nice, different? That's a nice question because three years ago, uh, three years ago, I was telling people that Bivol beat Canelo. You know, three years ago, I was saying that. But for that fight, I was going with Canelo because you know what? I got caught up with the hype, with the Canelo hype because he went up to 168, beating everybody up. And, tell, and telling people that he sparred with heavyweight and was beating up heavyweight. And then you, and now he wants to get Uzik. So, you know, I've been caught up on the Canelo hype. But, you know, if, if, if I wouldn't get caught up uh, by the Canelo hype, I would have said Bivol because he has all the tools to be, to be Canelo. Because Canelo, to be honest with you, is not that, that tough to beat. You know, he's a good fighter. But it's not it's not that hard to beat. Uh, you saw how how Floyd beats him, and usually he beats the other guy because it's, it's stronger. But now he faced a guy who was as strong as him, was probably hitting as hard as him because people think Bivol doesn't have a good punch. I face Bivol. Bivol has an excellent punch, a, respect, a respectable punch, and you know he was moving a lot. So I knew that uh, the Russian could have given him like a lot of trouble, but like I said, I got caught up with the Canelo hype. So I'm glad that I did. I'm glad that that I didn't beat uh, bet my house on it. <laughs> so you know I still have my house. But uh, Bivol is a, is a, is an excellent fighter, and that's why he beat me. Because to beat Jean Pascal, you need to be special. That's certainly true. Bivol, I, w I would like to still talk a little bit more about, about Bivol. Given, you know, the outcome that happened on Saturday night, you know, there's a lot of rumblings and talk that Bivol will like will welcome a rematch against Canelo, obviously at 175. And it doesn't matter. It doesn't mind going back down to 168 in Canelo's, uh, let's just say, natural weight, per se. Do you think in the rematch between Canelo versus Bivol or Bivol Canelo, would it be the same outcome that we saw this past Saturday? To be honest with you, at 168, it might be a little bit different because Canelo is going to be a little bit stronger. Uh, Biba is going to be a big light heavyweight, so he can make, he can make 168. Uh, I'm not telling you he's going to make it easy, but he's going to be a big light heavyweight. Uh, but the fact that Canelo is going to be a little bit stronger, faster, it might do a difference, make a difference. But like I said, it will be a hard pick. And I won't bet my house on it. <laughs> Not on that one either, huh? So uh, the whole topic is, you know, what should Canelo do next? As a fighter yourself, that's been in a lot of prestigious fights with a lot of names that we, you know, you mentioned, and we all know. What, what should Canelo do next? Uh, you know, get into the rematch quickly, face Triple G as maybe, you know, in, in, in the 168, fight other fighters, possibly, you know, the names of Benavidez, the Charlos. What do you think we should be next for Canelo at the moment? I don't think to be honest with you, if I will be Canelo, I will stay away from headway. And if um, Joe Smith beats Arthur Bebetier, maybe try to go after Joe Smith. But if you go back down to 168, uh, it's going to be tough, tough challenge because I know um, the young kid. Um, Benavides. Benavidez is going to try to chase him. And now, and, and there's going to be a tough fight for Canelo. Uh, so, I, so I will try to stay away of Benavidez. So I think the best, the best shot for him to take it, um, a third fight, a rubber match with, uh, with uh, GGG, because I think he beats GGG, he, he might stop him. You think so, in yeah. this fight? Yeah. Did you watch his previous fight, Triple G? When he fought more, yeah, the that. first fight I had the close fight, I had Canelo winning, but that was a close fight. And the second fight, I had Canelo winning easier, though. Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. It, it's it's always, I, I think, that book 
that chapter in the book could be finally sealed if we have the third fight coming up. I, you know, as a fighter yourself, you know, there's something that stood out for me that many people probably noticed it or watched it. But as a fighter yourself, you know, in your training camp, you got to take care of your, your, your mental uh, aspect. You got to take care of, you know, the miles, the mitts, how many hits, you know, how many rounds you do in the bag, the sparring, your weight cutting. But one thing that is very crucial as well is the diet. You know, the diet, you got to make sure you got to stay away from the fat food. You got to make sure you got to stay away from the burgers, make sure no sodas, etc. Canelo said he started a vegan plan for this fight. Do you believe that was also that caused him to look a little bit more fatigued in the fight versus Bivol? Because to me, he just looked a little bit tired, possibly could be because Bivol was just a bigger guy, his weight, and maybe carrying all that weight for Canelo. Do you believe that the vegan diet also possibly played a factor in that fight? To be honest with you, it's really hard to tell because everybody is different. Me, I'm not vegan. Uh, like, when I train for a fight in camp, like, I eat super healthy, like, uh, no dairy product, gluten-free, but I eat a little bit of, of red meat and meat. You know, vegans, you don't eat meat at all. But, you know, I don't do no dairy product and no vegan, but it's when I eat. So everybody is different. I don't think uh, that plays a big factor. Uh, but like I said, who knows? Uh, like my friend GSP, because because uh, it's from my town, is a girlfriend of mine. He was doing uh, the fasting. Uh, I tried it. I was able to do it. The fasting that was good. But at the same time, I'm a boxer. I need energy. And when I go to the gym, I need energy, so I need to eat. So so you know, I stopped to do the fasting, and you know, I came back to my regular diet, just just to eat healthy. Uh, no dairy product, no gluten. I cut the salt, the tea, and you know, so far it works for me. So, John Pascal, what can you promise to your fans? A lot of fans that have followed you throughout your career, what can you promise them come May 20th when you face Fen Long Ming? Listen, I need a promise. I need all my fans first to download probox.tv, then after that, to download that application i promise you guys i'm gonna win that fight for you to show the world that we are still on top it's a promotion put by, put together by Roy Jones jr Pauli malinaji juan manuel marquez antonio torvar uh talk to us a little bit more of that opportunity how that opportunity came uh for you at this moment well, this is a this is a great opportunity that's a that's a great platform this is the first i think boxing platform like that because we have that zone but that zone there's many sports baseball football hockey and stuff like that but but probox.tv is only boxing so you know if you want to have the best news uh, you, need, you need to see the inside you you have to subscribe to probox uh, probox.tv because like i said it's only strictly boxing uh, for boxing fans yeah, we can see that nowadays, you know, like you said, you know, you can subscribe. Everything's in the palm of our hands, right? Everything we want at a part of our hands to make it easier. Yeah. Pro Box TV is going to give us the opportunity for fans to strictly just focus on boxing. Uh, you know, being around, you know, Roy Jones Jr., Juan Manuel Marquez, Pauli Naji, a great commentator on TV, Antonio Torvar, as well as done it before. Uh, you know, what is a little bit the insight that they've talked to you about? What, you know, what is dynamics or... or or the plans that they have for Pro Box TV at this moment. <clears throat> but listen, you got you have four legends like your Pauli, Roy Jones, Stalver, uh, Marquez. You have four boxing legends who put their brain together to come up with this idea uh, with Pro Box uh, TV. So I feel that's very fantastic, and you know I feel very honored to be the first even. Uh, of this um, platform. And also like you have four great for a cheap, like this is a cheap day for 199. You subscribe for 199 and you can see like uh, Polly, Roy Jones, Sauver, Manuel Marquez talking about boxing. You know, all, all those knowledge for $199, that's, that's cheap, that's a cheap day. So, so you know, for any boxing fan, subscribe now because I'm telling you, after the 20th, the price is gonna go up. <laughs> yeah, definitely. You know, so it's it's not too late to uh, subscribe now to Pro Box TV. 
I want to jump into your, your match that you're going to have on Friday, May 20th. Uh, Fan Long Ming is 17 and 0. He's the number one contender of the IBF, a southpaw. Uh, I watched a little bit of his highlights the past few days. And uh, he's a very traditional fighter. I uh, would like to have a little bit more of your insight. You know, what, what are the qualities that he has in the ring? Because, you know, talking about being a traditional farm, my personal uh, point of view is that, you know, he, he, loves, he loves to do the combinations, the foundations, you know, jab to the body, jab to the head, you know, the clean hooks. Uh, what is something that has outstanding you the, that's out, that stand out the most from, from Ming as you prepare for him next well, week? Well, Ming, uh, there's a reason why he's the number one IPF contender. Because he got killed, he went to the Olympic. Uh, he's a he's a he's a traditional fighter, so so I need to be ready for this guy. And he wants to prove uh, to the world that he belongs to the elite uh, uh, to elite fighters. So so I train very hard for for this fight. I know he's gonna try to use like his height, his long reach. He's gonna move a lot, uh, but you know I've been there done that. Falong May is going to be unknown. <laughs> Me, I've been there with so many guys, Hopkins, Dawson, Bute, Kovalev, Badu Jack, been there, done that. But him, this is his first step up. Step up. He's going to be unknown. So I'm going to try to bring him to the unknown to see if he has everything to be on top, to be among those kind of fighters like myself, and Kovalev and Badu Jack and Hopkins and blah, 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 you know? So, so you know, I'm going to use my experience. Uh, is, 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 he is a little bit younger than me, but like I said, I'm a young 39, plus I'm black, so I'm 29. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's perfect. I think you summed it up right there. <laughs> but, you know, <laughs> your resume, you know, it expands. It's very... Uh, prestigious facing all these top fighters you know at the end what you were saying is that your experience is what's going to be the, the that's going to overpower me that's going to it's going to overpower ming do you believe that's the 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 highest skill set that you have going on may 20th is that your experience will beat ming who's 17 and 0 right now at this moment definitely i believe that uh, that's why i took the fight uh it's just something in me that that is going to be able to pull off the victory, that's why they took the fight. But me, I believe in my skill, I believe um, in my knowledge, my experience, and I think, you know, uh, overall, I got more skill than Falun Man. I've been to the Olympics as well. I'm a 2004 Olympian, you know, for Canada. Uh, I'm pro since 2005. I've been in this game for 25 years and maybe 18 years as a pro. So like I said, been there, done that. I'm gonna use my experience uh, my cleverness, and you know, I'm gonna show the world why why I've been on top for 13, 12 years straight. You know, because since I beat Chad Dawson uh, in 2009, uh, I was among the early fighters in my division. So, so you know, I'm gonna show the world why why I'm still relevant. Last time we saw you in the ring was in 2019. It's it's less than three years. Uh, almost together, uh, two years and a half that we see in the ring. How has preparation been this time around, you know, for, for Ming? How was camp this time? What was a little bit different uh, going into this fight, preparing for this fight? Well, to be honest with you, uh, camp was okay. It could have been better, but the thing is the fact that I've been out, I said, out of the ring for three years, uh, it took a little bit more time to get my, my rhythm, uh, my coordination, my speed, but now everything is in place. Uh, I'm expecting to, to do a great fight. I changed trainer, and now I'm with Orlando Quillar, who fight many, many world champions, uh, Glenn Johnson, Anthony Tarver. Uh, he's the Hall of Fame trainer, uh, and you know, he trained, he trained you very, very hard. Sometimes I wanted to quit, but <laughs> I'm not a quitter, so I never quit. So, you know, because I know when it's hard, no pain, no gain. So, so when it's hard, that's when, that's when it's, that counts. So, so, you know, I never quit. Uh, and that's why today I'm in shape. That's why I got my rhythm back, my speed coordination. And uh, I'm gonna, so I'm gonna, and I'm ready to show the world that uh, I'm still relevant and I'm still, uh, I'm, and I'm supposed to be ranked number three 
uh, in my division after after the two champions, Bivol and 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 BBTF, supposed to be me because I never lost my title on the ring. We'll talk a little bit more about it. That's, that's a good point, Bivol and, and Better BF. But uh, one thing that I like what you said was, you know, being in the ring for almost three years, the, the disadvantages at the moment where, you know, your rhythm, your pace, getting back, you know, getting back together, trying to make sure you're staying uh, active, you know, in the ring. Is there always pros and cons or what is the advantage, disadvantages being out of the ring that long? Because I could I could say that maybe being out of the ring for a quite amount of time. Yes, your body is 100 percent. You know, you're not taking the beatings like you would fighting two or three times a year. But what could you say is one of the advantages, disadvantages being out of the ring for 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 a quite amount of time? Well, like sometimes too much. It's like not enough. You know, I've been out of the ring for almost three years. The good thing is I didn't receive any punch in my head. So no, no concentration. Uh, my body was able to rest. But now it was the time to get back on the ring. Uh, I think maybe I, I had a little bit too much rest. So that's why it took me a little bit more time to get my rhythm back. But we don't care because now it's back. You know, my coordination is back. My speed is back. My power is back. So, so you know, I just, I'm just gonna have to show that uh, next five days on the ring why uh, I was two-time world champion, soon to be three times. Soon to be three times. Provided that you win May twentieth, you know what you were saying. Once you win, the names of Better Beef now Bivol are names. You know, even Joe Smith are names in the 175 category that are standing out. Uh, what is it that you're looking forward to? Provided that you win May 20th, where would you like to go from that fight to the next one? What would you like to do next? Honestly, I really don't think about anything else than follow me. Because if I don't beat follow me, nothing's going to happen. So right now, my focus is on follow me. And when I beat follow me, then I'm going to start to, I'm going to start to think about what's next. But right now, what's next is follow me. And this is all, this is all matters for me. And I, I and I need to beat this guy because he wants to prove the world that he, that he belongs to the top fighters, or to the top ranking. And and me, I want to to show the world that I'm still relevant. I'm still three-time world champion. I never lost my title uh, on the ring in the ring. So you know that's gonna be a very competitive uh, fight because uh, he got skilled. Uh, he got yes, skilled, but I think I, I, I think I, I think I have better skill than him. Plus, I got more experience than him. Uh, 